G'day, welcome back. I'd especially like to welcome my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content of my channel. If you missed the last video, the new rigid parting tool holder, there's a link up there now, you can watch that first, then come back and watch this one. Alrighty, so I'm going to squeeze, or try to squeeze in one more video before I head up north. And I'm going to make uh, one more tool holder for the lathe, something I've had in mind for a while. So follow me over to the bench, over there, and I'll show you what I've got in mind. Alrighty, so uh, a while back I bought this die grinder, or I suppose you call it a die grinder. It has a nice machined section here, so you can clamp it into a tool holder. So what I want to do is use up some more of that uh, old cast aluminium I've got and I cast up a tool holder for this so I can use it on the lathe for you know, grinding jaws or you know, fixing the run out in collet chucks or whatever. So first up we'll have to get in and make up a, uh, a foam piece for them to cast. So I'll get in and do that. Alrighty, for the benefit of uh, for the, uh, my new subscribers who may not have seen me do this before, I decided I would show you how I do this just for the sake of showing you. Rightio. So, that piece there is to, uh, is to make the block for here. All right, so I'll machine some dovetails in that one. And this bit here, I shall glue on there. That way. So that this can fit in there like that. But what I'm going to do is cut a hole in there. But I should have prepared that before I started making this video, so I'll stop. While I go and prepare that, then I'll come back and show you what I'm going to do. Alrighty, now that I've got myself prepared, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut straight in down that line till I get to this line, and then I'm going to rotate this thing and cut a circle out of the centre here, and then come back out the same line I went in. Yeah, so that gets rid of that centre bit. All right. Now I had to cut up a new piece for this because yeah, I just didn't leave it long enough so I can get a, a bolt down through this section here. So now I need to trim this back, figure out just how long it needs to be. So I've got plenty of clearance for the uh, that fit in there. About there somewhere I'd reckon. Cut that off. This is just a piece of piano or a guitar wire, whatever it is. And it's been heated up to around 8 volts uh, DC at the moment. Cut through that like it's not there. Now I can glue this onto there. Like that. Using this special glue I've got here. This uh, It's a special glue made just for styrofoams. And it works the same way as, uh, as a contact cement. So you need to put it on both surfaces and allow it to flash off. I find the easiest way to do that is just smear all over one face and then rub the two together. And then take them apart and wait for them to flash off. Alrighty, so that's pretty much uh, tacked off, I think, enough now. Also glued uh, these two, the cut back together here as well. Somewhere in the centre there will do. Right. So now what I need is a sprue. This heavier foam that I use here is not much good for making sprues because it takes too long to burn away and the, the material can start to, the molten aluminium can start to cool off before it finishes filling this thing. So they're sweaty, they're sweating profusely. Um, I use a bit of this, this rubbish, this um, Really low, lightweight garbage that I started with. Just cut that crappy bit off there. Piece. A bit that wide. about maybe maybe that long 
Alrighty. So now we get some glue on here and here and glue these two together. Alrighty, so I think these are flashed off well enough now. So I'll glue these two together here. I'm gonna have to trim one of these up a little bit, I think. Which would have been easier before I did this, but anyway, that's life. Okay, so that's that's the sprue there now. So that will feed feed the alloy down into, and this is the way we'll cast it down that way. So that's the top, that's the bottom. The only thing really needs to do now is just finish dressing this up a bit and uh, coat it with some gypsum plaster and then allow it to dry. It takes a good day to dry and then uh, I'll cast this up tomorrow morning, weather permitting. Alrighty, time to see how we fared today. Also formed up a half a can of Spam today. Alrighty, that was a pretty productive pour this morning. Not only did I get my uh, piece that I wanted, but I got this out of that, well, it wasn't actually Spam, it's a Danish brand of bloody pork sausage stuff. That'll be a useful lump to be somewhere. Even the sprue might be useful at some stage. I mean, that's pretty solid. I don't think it's full of inclusions. And that lump there that's uh, just the piece that sat on the top here like that. I pour it into so I've got all of that out of the one pour so looking good so I've, I've knocked off all the furry bits off this all the little bits that break out of the out of the plaster so I'll get that into the mill and start cleaning it all up Well, I've got to say, this is one of my better castings. Uh, <laughs> there didn't appear to be any real uh, inclusions in it. But the problem was the more I faced this, the more I found. But that's the top. Um, and outside of that, there's just a few tiny little spots. Except for that, that's uh, where I glued it together and there was a bit of a gap there. I don't want to take any more off. And there's a couple little spots, like one just here, and one just on the edge where that'll probably go. And that's from where I joined it. And there, just little spots from the... Uh, imperfections in the in the uh, in the actual foam I'm pretty happy with that so next up we'll get in and bore this out alrighty change of plans about what I'm going to do next I want to cut the uh, dovetails in there next before I bore that out Be at the right width now, just about to start cutting dovetails before I thought something doesn't look right. And when I measured it, it wasn't right because I'd left the measurement off my drawing. And uh, where I only went, it was going to 16mm, it should have been 24mm. But anyway, uh, so I'll get a dovetail cutter in there and cut some dovetails. 
I've already had it in there once. I want to put this bloody thing back in. I forgot to tighten it up and it dragged it out and took a chunk out of there, which I'm not happy about. But anyway, we'll get that dove card cutter in there. Alrighty, I've ended up 0.1 over what I was shooting for, but I think that'll be okay. Alrighty, moment of truth. Does it fit and does it lock up? Get in there. Yes, it does. Perfect. Just so it wasn't any wider than that. Well, viewers, that's one bit of video you won't have to sit through. I had some lunch and now this thing had cooled down and I came back out and I put the uh, boring head in it. I thought I'll just do one clean up pass in there and measure it, see what I've got to take out. Um, and it's already there, it's already 0.12 big. So uh, that's bloody that. <laughs> so no boring. So the next cab off the rank, I guess, will be to uh, put put something down through here to clamp it with and uh, and then slit it. Alrighty, so I got a couple of these uh, that I had on the, the old uh, table, the one I built. I want to use one of them in there. We'll get this mill flat in there and then drill it for M6. This wide DRO is just, the table's moving, the DRO is not. I'm going to have to have another look at that. I don't know if you have enough clearance, I might have to uh, stick a 12mm one in a bit higher up, give it some more clearance around here, around this top right here. Even that won't be big enough because it's nearly 14mm. Anyway, we'll get this hole drilled in here. Okay, so I'll get that out of there and uh, put the slitting saw through here. Alright, I'll get that out of there and see how good a job that does at clamping it up. Alrighty, so that locks that up quite nicely. Something going right for a change. Alrighty, so you might be thinking I'm just about done here, but I'm not. Uh, because this is a lot wider than the tool post. Oh, come on. Get on there. And ordinarily, these tool holders are nowhere near as wide. So what I've got to do is figure out, you know, like where my centre is. And I wasn't going to put an adjusting screw on it, but I've decided I will. But what I'm going to have to do to do that is mill a bit more out of here like I did just on this part here. So I can put an adjusting screw that will run down into a hole so I can move it up and down. But we'll do that next. Alrighty, so I decided the best, easiest way, and maybe not the best way, but the easiest way to figure out the correct centre height for this thing was just to clamp it in the chuck, leave everything sort of loose until you've got the clamp up and then tighten everything down and uh, and then mark the top here and I've already done that. So I'll get that back out of there now and uh, machine a bit out of here so that I can put a thumb screw in here that will allow it to adjust to that, the height, the top of the tool post. 
At this point in the video, I'd like to thank my patrons for the continued support. It's greatly appreciated. If you'd like to become a patron, there's a link down in the description. You can sign up down there and toss me a couple of dollars every month. If you don't want to become a patron, there's always buy me a coffee. And there's a QR code on the screen there. You can scan that. Or there's always that thanks button down there. <laughs> Alrighty, so I just locked tight a bit of that stainless salt 6mm oil thread I've got in here, a piece of that. Knurl up a little knob out of this to put in there to adjust it with. Alrighty, there we have it, all done, finished. I'm really happy with how that came out, and uh, like I said, probably one of my better uh, castings. A little piss over about that bit there, but anyway, that's life. I really hope you enjoyed watching me make that, and uh, if you did, how about smashing that like button and giving it a great big thumbs up, because you know, it kind of helps me out. Well, uh, this was, I had three videos in the bank, this is number three. I may well be back by the time, uh, back from Nakon Nowhere, I mean Nongbulumpu. Uh, by the time this one goes live, I will have uh, loaded them all up and set them to play on certain dates. Uh, if I do get back, I'll uh, try and get something out, otherwise it could be a week or so after you watch this one before I get something else out. Well, I mean two weeks. Anyway, like I said, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you all when I get back from Nakon Nowhere. Bye-bye. Bye.